Abdul Rahman Kasig, also known as Peter, was adopted as a newborn by Ed and Paula Kasig. But once he became an adult, he sought out his birth mother and formed a close bond with her and his two siblings. Now that second family is struggling to deal with the 26-year-old aid worker's murder at the hands of ISIS. Barbara Harrington sat down with Kasich's birth mother, Rhonda Schwint, to talk about how they're coping with the loss of a brother and son. If you first of all want to explain, Rhonda, how Peter came back into your life uh, 18 years after you gave him up for adoption. When he turned 18, I just got a call from the adoption attorney who said that Peter wanted to meet, and he not only wanted to meet me, but he wanted to meet his brother and sister. I told, uh, with my husband and I, sat Jan and Sam down and told them about their big brother. They were 12 and 10. That was not an easy conversation to try to explain, um, but they were both very excited. I told him he would be coming by the next day. They devised a plan that they would set on the front porch pretty much all day um, until they saw that green pickup truck come down the street. And as soon as they did, they ran across the yard and right into the middle of the street. And Peter stopped with the truck still running and jumped out and they just fell into a big hug right in the middle of the street. Um, it was the purest expression of love, I think, I've ever seen. And they were brother and sister from that moment on. It wasn't until I believe about a year after that he was captured that ISIS released this video saying that he was their next execution target. Right. How did your family find out about that video? My son actually found out first, um, and that was from Google Alerts. He had um, set his phone, so anytime something came up about Peter, um, and so I had always, I had hoped that if that happened, I wanted to know first so that I could let both of um, Jan and Sam know, but Sam found out first and actually he called me. It was a very dark day when that occurred. Prior to Peter being named as the next victim, um, Paul and Ed did um, a, a beautiful job, a, a wonderful job for lack of a better way of saying it, of keeping us in the loop. Um, they would let us know um, what they knew. Once Peter was named as a victim, um, as the next intended victim, we never heard anything. I mean, um, it was like a, a wall of silence went up. There are people who may see this and say, you know, you gave Peter up for adoption. You signed away your rights. What did you expect from the government? What do you say to those people? I did sign away my legal rights, um, but that doesn't make us less of a family um, for Peter. And Jan and Sam didn't sign away any rights. They are Peter's brother and sister. And Peter wanted to be a member of our family and Peter was a member of our family. That's not how we, and particularly Jan and Sam, were treated. And we were not asking to be um, at the family table, so to speak, at strategy sessions. We were not asking to be included um, in trips to Washington, D.C. That's not what we were asking for. We were simply asking to receive victims' assistance so that Jan and Sam could receive counseling um, that helps with this kind of traumatic grief. This, I mean, that's what the FBI specializes in. When I asked repeatedly for assistance, um, I was told that we did not meet the legal definition of next of kin. In Peter's darkest moments, he was thinking about his mom, his dad, and his brother and his sister and he was given the opportunity to write two letters, and one of those was to his sister about her and about her brother, Sam. So clearly, for Peter, they were the most important people in his life, and shame on the government for treating them as if they didn't matter, as if they didn't exist. Would you mind reading part of the letter that he sent to his sister? Okay. 
The first and most important thing to remember is that I love you and Sam. I'm sorry. Is that I love you and Sam more than words can ever express. I am afraid, of course, but I am at peace with my situation and I will face whatever comes with as much dignity and faith as possible. It is very important, Jana, that you do not let anything that may happen to me pull you down. No matter what, I will be okay. I can handle it and I chose to come here knowing the risk and doing what I could do to help others the best way I know how. If I have to die, that's as good as reason as any. What would you say to Peter if you could give him one message, if you could send him a letter like that, what would, what would it say? Oh gosh, we all would give anything to have one more moment, you know? Sorry. Um, I would tell him how proud I am of him. And I would tell him that, um, that I love him and that I always loved him and I always will love him. And I would tell him that Jana and Sam are going to be okay and that he was a good big brother and he was always a good big brother and that we all make mistakes, but that we all love him very much. The Schwint family held their own private memorial service, service forecast to complete with military honors. The two children have also gotten tattoos of images that remind them of their brother. They say that this way they can carry him with them throughout the rest of their lives.